walk out here and check for some fresh eggs so we can make Levi's cake. We've got three. The next door, there's probably not any in there. Whoop. There's gonna be one in there soon. Are you doing your thing, girl? Huh? Are you laying an egg? Would you like for me to leave you alone? But a broody chicken. She's been laying on some about 20 eggs for two weeks. Oh, that is not the Brody chicken. The Brody chicken was one of the red ones. What are you doing? These are not your eggs. Are you egg setting for someone? Or did you steal someone's eggs? Yeah, you let that other mama have her eggs back. Over here that we just seen. Hey. Thank you. This is a fairly warm egg, so I doubt it's her. Somebody needs to come sit back on their eggs over here. I'll go ahead and take these two out. It looks like the Brody hen has kicked those out anyways. So you can't get much fresher than this. Four fresh farm eggs to go on the cake and this closest one right here is very, very warm on my hand. So it is definitely hot off the press. Hey y'all, welcome back to Pine Knot Family Farm. I'm Tasha. Today we're back in the kitchen. Today is actually Levi's birthday. So I'm going to be making a hummingbird cake. Um, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of a hummingbird cake before. It's got nuts, bananas, pineapple, coconut in it. Kind of just a little bit of everything with the cream cheese icing. So that's what we're going to be making today for Levi for his birthday. Um, it's storming here. The electricity's actually been flickering off a couple of times, so we're gonna try to get this done. Hope that the electricity don't go off. It's just yucky day outside, but you know what? The garden needs this drink from Mother Nature. So, not complaining at all. The thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put two cups of flour. one teaspoon of baking soda, three-fourths a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're going to whisk this together. This will be your dry ingredients. And combined it and you're going to set that to the side for your wet ingredients i have got 11 tablespoons of unsalted butter it's been melted and it's completely cool one and a fourth teaspoon of vanilla now i know i've done a video on making homemade vanilla extract i'll link that above i'm still using the uh, Mexican vanilla that I've gotten at the international grocery store, trying to use it up. So one and a fourth, this is a half teaspoon. We're gonna do one and a third cups of sugar. And two eggs. Now these are the eggs I showed at the beginning of the video that we went and got fresh from the coop this morning. You're just gonna let this mix until it's really good and smooth and incorporated. This is what your egg, sugar, vanilla, and butter will look like once it's mixed well and incorporated nicely. Next we're gonna take three 
wrapped bananas. And we just got nice mashed bananas. They're gonna go in your sugar and egg mixture. Mix that on low just to incorporate it. Now that this is incorporated in, you're going to add your dry ingredients that you had set into the side, which is your flour, salt, bacon soda, and cinnamon. Just gonna very slowly incorporate this in. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna fold in some toasted pecans or walnuts of your choice crushed pineapple, about two thirds of a cup, and two thirds of a cup of unsweetened coconut shreds. Now I have sweetened coconut, that's what I usually use. I don't really think it makes that much of a difference. Pineapple, you can get canned pineapple, you can get it already crushed, diced, however you choose. I can my own pineapple. Um, this is actually from 427 to 2018. I have been waiting for pineapples to go on sale again because as soon as they do, I'm going to show y'all how I can pineapple. It is the best thing ever. I wish y'all could taste this. It is so sweet and so good. It is like you are cutting a fresh pineapple in season open. So if you've never canned pineapple before, wait till they go on sale and I'll have a video out to show you. It is amazing to have fresh pineapple sitting on the shelf. You know what's in it and you can have fresh pineapple in December or January. Two thirds a cup of toasted pecans. I don't measure that. I toasted these in the oven earlier and I made extras for the outside of the cake for extra flavor and also for decoration. Next, we're going to dice up our canned pineapples that I had showed you. Okay, I've just added the pineapple, the pecans, and the toasted coconut. And now we're just going to fold it in. You're not going to use a mixer. Got two 8-inch round cake pans just with some Crisco and flour. I'm just going to spread it out. I always just tap my cakes to release any air pockets into a 350 degree oven. It's preheated. And it's gonna go in there for 20 to 25 minutes, 350 degrees. While that's baking, I'm gonna get my cream cheese icing together. So I'll show y'all how to do that. The recipe for both the hummingbird cake and the cream cheese icing will be in the description below. So it'll be an easy reference for y'all. The cream cheese icing that's gonna go on top of this hummingbird cake, you're gonna need eight ounces of cream cheese that's been setting out that's soft at room temperature and five tablespoons of unsalted butter that once again has been sitting out at room temperature and is soft. We're gonna mix these medium high for two to three minutes. We're gonna get it really good and incorporated. Halfway through, I turn it off, scrape down the sides. You wanna make sure you get this incorporated really well. y'all can see that it's really fluffy that's what you're looking for just a whipped look two teaspoons of vanilla we're gonna mix it well again it's 
So after the vanilla gets incorporated, we're going to be adding powdered sugar. Now, you don't have to sift the powdered sugar. I just like to. To me, it incorporates and it gives the cream cheese just a little bit lighter texture. So I try, I don't always, but I try to sift my powdered sugar. Now we're gonna be doing two and a half cups. Nothing fancy here. So I got the first cup of powdered sugar sifted. I'm just gonna put it letting this slowly incorporate while I sift the rest of my powdered sugar just on low now we're gonna add the last half a cup remember to start out low so you don't have powdered sugar flying all over your kitchen just gonna let this incorporate really well what you're looking for is your icing to be stiff where it doesn't just run off but it's also very uh, spreadable so just kind of the consistency that you're looking for see how that just kind of falls off of there just going to take my knife make sure it's loose around all the edges which it should be if you Spread your pan really well. And I've got it setting on a cooling rack until it's completely cool. See how nice and brown it is on the bottom. I'm gonna flip it over. You can see all the coconut flakes. You can see the chunks of pineapple and the nuts in there. So our cakes are completely cooled. These have been cooling for about an hour now. I've got my cream cheese icing out of the refrigerator. And what I'm gonna do is just place a little on the bottom. This acts as a glue. Hold your cake in place. I'm gonna put a nice layer of cream cheese in the middle. Flip it over so you've got a nice flat area to us. I've got the cake back in the refrigerator, just letting the icing kind of get cold and firm up. Then I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit. I will show y'all that when I get it all done. I'll show a little clip at the end. Levi's actually on his way home. I've got a roast in the oven. I guess I could have showed y'all how I done my roast in the oven too, but I didn't get that video, maybe another time. Sometimes I do it in the slow cooker, sometimes the Instapot. I really like if I have time to just slow roast it in the oven. That's what I did today. Uh, so we're gonna have roast and potatoes and carrots and then hummingbird cake. That's gonna be Levi's birthday dinner tonight. So I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me in the kitchen. Uh, if you've never heard of hummingbird cake, give it a try. It's moist and delicious. Um, if you like a lot of cream cheese icing, you may wanna double the recipe. But if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Once again, I'll leave the recipe in the description, so go check it out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not part of the Pine Knot YouTube family, hit that subscribe button so that way you make sure you don't miss any of our videos. Y'all have a great one, and until next time, God bless.